formed accounting bureaus two years ago um, with only a few clients. So, uh, being an accountant, we also a small business owner, so um, we knew how it was to actually start up a new business from scratch. Um, yeah, we are both um, we both belong to Institute of Chartered Accountants, so we both qualified accountants. Um, difference between a chartered accountant and just an accountant is um, we have to comply with all the regulations set by the institute. They come and review our work to make sure that we are providing, uh, we act in the best interest of our clients. All our work papers are up to date, and we um, we just to be using best practice and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And what else? Ross likes racing, so something apart from accounting. He likes racing and stuff. Um, yeah. <coughs> A bit of a traveler. So. A bit of traveling myself. So. Yep. And the software that we use, um, accounting software, um, we can access it anywhere in the world. It's like a, it's an online accounting software. So you can actually do your accounts even if you're sitting on the other side of the world, which makes it quite good. Appreciate your remarks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't have to be that. It's all smart. So we belong to the Institute of Chartered Accountants, as you get said. Um, we're going to talk about business structures. Um, oh, so just the other thing is, is yeah, he does my boss too, so I have to watch what I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she, <laughs> she does most of the work, and, and you know, I've got an IT business and do a bit of work in that, more work in that, um, but yeah, he does full time on the accounting side. Um, with accounting gurus, and, um, and that's one of the things she's going to tell you about. Yeah. Um, so, starting up a business, um, are you business owners or are you probably looking for a business? Um, it depends what sort of structure you're looking at, it depends upon your situation. If you're a full time employee, then and if you're doing part time, um, job for, for your friends and stuff and you're invoicing them, so you probably want to set up a sole trader. Sole trader have less compliance work than a company. And you've got companies. Companies are all registered entities in New Zealand, so you have to register a company in the company's office. Um, there's more requirement for forming a company, which I can cover in more detail later on. Partnership um, is with two people or more. Um, you can have a registered partnership. Registered partnership is you have to tell IOD that you're starting up this business and it's going to be a partnership. Trust, again, you can have a trading trust and non-trading. Trading trust is where you actually receive income from other sources, whereas non-trading is like more like a mum and dad family trust. You have your personal home in it. Um, advantages and disadvantages of these structures. Um, Tax rate for different structure is different. So company, for example, have 28%. Trust have 33%. So if you have your profit in a company, you, you're paying 28% tax on that profit, whereas trust, you're paying 33%. So that's just sort of one advantage. So a trader, if you in between 0 to 14,000, 14, you pay 10%. Oh, yeah. From 14 to 48,000, you pay 19.5. So anything is that um, total income or just as secondary? Um, no, no, it's total income. Okay. So it's like a progressive tax. Like your, so if you're employed, your employer sort of averages out the tax rate, and that's how they charge you. You might probably be taxed at twenty percent, which is like average, average rate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anything over between forty-eight thousand and seventy thousand, you pay thirty-two point oh four percent. So if you're earning 48000 already and you've got this other business where you actually generate 20000 you probably want to have that in your company because company tax rate is 28%. Yeah, and anything over 70000 for a personal, like for your personal return, like for individuals, you pay 35%. So the individual tax rate is slightly higher than 20, uh, to the companies. Yeah, but the downside of the company is that you've got a bit of a setup cost and yeah. compliance that you've got to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. But so it depends on your personal circumstances to how much money you plan to, to make and um, yeah. 
and you know, what, what you see the future as as well. So you could potentially start up as a sole trader, but you probably want to move pretty quickly off, off as a sole trader. Yeah. So again, another thing to do is when you start up a business is um, do up a little cash flow or a budget. Maybe so figure out what you want to do. Um, where is your income going to come from? Um, how often it's going to come? How how often you're going to invoice your clients? Is it like as soon as the job is completed, you're going to invoice them, or you do 50% upfront invoicing? Um, what are your costs? What are your startup costs? Um, do you have to buy a computer? Are you going to buy a business vehicle? Um, so stuff like that you have to take into account when you start up a business. Financing, how, who's going to finance that? Are you going to take a loan? Have you got enough in your savings account? Because um, this is where a lot of our clients are going wrong. They said, oh, I want to quit my job, I had enough, I'm going to start this business. But they haven't allowed enough savings for the startup cost. One other thing would be um, when you register a company with a company's office, $250 straight away. So just doing a registration and reserving the name. Um, having an accountant do a trustee if you're forming a trust, so or, the, or lawyer involved. So there's a lot of startup cost which a lot of people don't uh, don't see that you don't forecast or allow for. So having a cash flow for the next twelve months would help you guys know, okay, yeah, this is the money coming in. So having a cash flow for the next twelve months would help you guys know, okay, yeah, this is the money coming in, this is my expenses, and yeah, I'm going to make a profit. I'm going to not just run losses and leave on somebody else's income for the for the time. Ask the question probably. Question probably as well. Do you all understand? Um, you all have some kind of understanding of companies versus, say, trusts and things. <coughs> so not, some nodding. <laughs> With any shaking of heads. I've written something in here that says something about companies having to have like shareholders. Does do all companies have to have shareholders or? Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. But you can just have one shareholder. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So you can just have yourself yeah. as the one shareholder. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the compulsory requirement for a company is to have a director. So again, you can have one director. You have to have a shareholder. And um, what else? The registered office. So the registered office is where all your records are kept, all the company minutes, um, all your invoices, all your, all your financial stuffs are kept as well. So that's actually a must for a company to sort of say where is your registered office. Um, could, that you? All, sorry. <coughs> could that all be, um, be the director, the shareholder, that could all be your and just not only be from the personal residence, that could be your um, registered office. Yep. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And you probably want to have a separate bank account in your personal account, so you sort of separate things out. The other thing, probably with the companies with the shareholder question, that's how you can, you know, if you've got a, a partner, then you can have them as a shareholder, um, and then they would be able to get half the, the profit that you're making in the company, which may be tax, there'll be a tax, potentially a tax advantage, so you save a bit of tax there like that, as opposed to if you're a sole trader, it's all yours, so you're going to be hit with the the top tax rate. is 35%. So sometimes you, you probably would want to leave the profit in the company because mm -hmm. the company rate is lower mm -hmm. as well. And if you have 50% um, shareholding, um, it's something which I was sort of started investigating now because most of the times husband and wife would have like 50 50 or 80 20 and stuff like that. Um, you can only allocate what she's actually putting into the business as well. So for example, like if, if it's 80-20, but the profit is high and you want to do 50-50 split, a lot of people actually do that, but you can't, because you have, in the beginning, you have set it up to be 80-20. So you, the split is always based on that shareholding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that person would have to buy more shares to participate in, in a bigger profit share. Yeah. Yeah. There's another advantage of having a company, um, if you start growing and stuff and you want to open up a, I don't know, big, 
accounts and then, then and you want to invest of um, get more investors. It's easier to get investors in a company than it is in other business structure type. So you do a um, proposal and stuff and get dialed into your sheets and get more people in. So if your partner had a full time job outside of the company and she was receiving dividends as well, does that Mrs. Would that push her into the five tax bracket? Yeah, was everything get combined into one income? Yeah, it's all. It is all dependent on the total income of that person. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's where a company you, you could decide. Okay, we're not going to give any um, of the profit to the shareholders this year. We're going to keep it all in the company because we need to grow the business. Okay. And if they can, if some of the shareholders can survive without their profit, then yeah. you can leave it all in the company, and the company just pays. 28%. Okay. Um, another way to take profit out of a company is drawings. So drawings is a equity account. So you um, you can take money out. So it won't affect your profit. So for example, if you've got a profit of ten thousand sitting there, and you want to take five thousand out, your profit will still be ten thousand because drawings does is not a profit and loss account. It's not an expense. So then you pay provisional tax on that. Regardless of how many, how much owner's drawings you take out, you can still pay on the, on the net prof, on oh, profit. Yeah. 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 So another thing is with the companies, it's a requirement to actually have a shareholder's current account. So shareholder's current account is like the money you've put in and the money you've taken out of the business. And that account, um, if it goes overdrawn, and it's, it's like a bank account, if it's overdrawn, the IOD will require you to um, pay interest on the overdrawn account. So what it means is if you put in say ten thousand into the business as funds introduced, you can and if you take out fifteen thousand, so you're actually taking out more than what you have put in, you pay interest on the five thousand which is overdrawn. And so that's like a you, that's like income for the company, so you're actually paying tax on that overdrawn amount.